this is after the short video of the powering up of the TV for the first time. I found part of the problem. Uh, tube um, number V8. Which is a sixth video IF amp. Which is that tube right there. I'm actually doing an IF alignment on it, and I could not get the sweep to go through at all. It turns out it was something stupid. I had to reseat the tube. Even though I cleaned all the pins on this, uh, for some reason I had to reseat it. Now I got a perfect, well, it's not perfect, but <laughs> I'm on, um, step six now on video IF alignment. I already did the sound. And I'm on, I did steps four and five. Got the markers right where they should be. Now I'm on six. That's what that waveform should look like. And uh, I don't think so. I'm gonna have to really do some adjustments here. Hang on a second. I say we got it. Made little IF loading blocks. And that's the one for the white ones for the demod probe. Yeah, I'm on step 18. This is what it looks like. I'd say that looks good. Everything lines up where it should be. I mean, your two sounds at your 4125 and 4725. All right where they should be that's where it should be on top so all the markers are right where they ought to be so. I'm gonna do an overall IF response check which is this step 19 right here just to verify All right, it's, what'd you say? It's out of phase, but there's color. Well, I mean like the tint, but I don't know why the signal's like this though. It was nice and strong. Right there. I gotta zoom in close because the, my phone's actually not picking it up as color until I zoom in. Got something going on, but why? It's like my signal's weak as shit. Oh, Is it this? Y the yes. After a good many adjustments later, uh, this is the part I needed to show, but I'm doing convergence right now. But let me back up to a few things that happened. Um, TV's been on probably more like than 10 hours already with no problems. I did change pretty much all the tubes out in the um, high voltage and sweep sections with new old stock. Uh, just some weird little issues here and there that I just tried swapping some tubes and it improved greatly. Um, one of the problems I was having, even though my tubes tested good, was the uh, I kept having a drive line, even though the horizontal drive was turned all the way down. Uh, swapping out the damper tube actually fixed that. Um, and uh, I, my, sh my shot regulator is actually bad. Uh, even though when I put it in, it tested fine. Um, 
now I have a rock steady 19 and a half kilovolt is actually running uh, well it's going all over the place with brightness levels and um, after I put the new shunt regulator in, it was actually too high, I turned it down, it's been fine. Uh, the only other things I've done so far was grayscale and, um, and a few other things. Uh, I, oh yeah, my RF AGC tube, the 6AN8, uh, was actually um, bad. It was actually delaminating inside. Like the mica material was actually peeling off in there and it was shorting to the heater. Moved the leads around, I mean, it caused a short. But that line you see in the picture there is not from the horizontal drive. That's the tuner, and that is a separate issue. Um, my IF is perfect, but my RF uh, tuning uh, slugs on the strips. All we need adjusted because every channel is different and it's all over the place so and I'll show you what I mean something must have cycled on right there because the lights blink too because um, there's the freezer and the air conditioning and the dehumidifier just turned on so you know, some of this pulled power but uh, one of the requests I got was how do you do convergence on this TV? It actually took me over an hour just to do the static convergence. First thing you gotta do is your um, purity. And your purity coil sits a quarter inch on that inside ring from the base of the neck. And the same thing as like any modern set, the yoke, yeah. Loosen it and slide it back till you just have a little blotch in the center of the screen. And then you actually use the cross purity adjustment right there. And in addition to lightly rotating the purity coil to you get the minimum amount or the best, you know, red or any color thereof in the middle. But you also want to use the least amount of current on the purity coil so it doesn't interfere with other functions of the TV. That's true. That control is almost at minimum. Slide the yoke back forward. I did the uh, field neutralization coil and got that perfect. Purity wasn't bad. To do um, your static convergence, those three screws, which I'm showing right there, are actually magnets. And that um, knob screw in the middle is to just lock it in place. Of course, you have your blue, your green on the left, red on the right. And going by the manual SAMs here, that's what you have to have on the screen. And when I started off, they were all over the place. Let me uh, throw them out of alignment for you. Now, as you can see, they're exactly as the SAMS describes in a perfect little triangle here. Blue, red, and green. That's what you have to do with the static magnets in the center. Is get them exactly like that, because when you turn the convergence control, as you can see, they're just gonna merge now, it's not perfect yet because I'm still working on dynamic convergence, which leads us up to where I'm at now. I got the oscilloscope here. It's actually pretty simple to do. Uh, you clip the scope lead on the lead 13 of the CRT socket, which is your dynamic convergence. Put a piece of electrical tape around so I don't put any marks on the cable. And it's just, as you can see, this loosely coupled. It's not even electrically touching, it's just you know coupled into the lead like that. It's a little fuzzy right now because I have it at minimum amplitude. I'm at the step. Well, I'll, I'll back up here. I want you to do this. The vertical convergence amplitude control, which is the outer 
adjustment potentiometer right there. Uh, set to its maximum counterclockwise position. Then you set the vertical shape control to the mid-range position. Then set the horizontal convergence amplitude control, which is this guy right here, to its maximum clockwise position. Adjust the horizontal convergence phase control slug, horizontal phase control slug right there for maximum amplitude on the scope. So it actually backed out a few turns, as you can see where the shiny part is. That's where it sat since the sixth, early 60s, so it's backed out a little bit. That got me max my maximum amplitude. And then you turn the horizontal convergence amplitude to minimum, fully counterclockwise, which brings you to where we're seeing on the scope right now. That's minimum amplitude. That's why it's a little fuzzy. And then you adjust where it's, you see where it says horizontal convergence, you gotta adjust that slug on top. Now we're back at this guy, the horizontal convergence amplitude. I'm going to adjust this for maximum. Which means I gotta change my scaling a little bit here and adjust my focus uh, tad. It's as good as it gets really. All right. And then it's telling me to adjust the horizontal convergence phase slug again to make it match figure 23. For which I have this adjustment tool here. Get it on there. There we go. And let's see what we got. It does exactly the same thing. Yeah, you can see when it gets out of phase right there. And, uh, it was pretty much good right where I was at. Okay then. And now we can put, uh, put the horizontal convergence amplitude to its fully counterclockwise position again. So once again, we got minimum waveform. All right. Vertical dynamic convergence adjustment. I have, I have a tube socket adapter in there. I have an oscilloscope hooked to pin one of V19. 1287 for the vertical dynamic convergence. This is the waveform I'm seeing now. TV's back on. So, let's see. We got to adjust the vertical convergence amplitude control and a vertical convergence shape control for a waveform similar to figure 24. Let's do it. Okay, so that's this control here that was set at the beginning. So, all right. Did it. Um, adjusting that. Now this was setting everything up uh, using the oscilloscope and everything. That's all set up correctly. And that's where I'm going to stop for tonight because the next step we got to do now you got to make those adjustments ever so slightly based on what the screen is doing. They're right. Or they should be like right now, and you need someone to deviate too far from that. But center is pretty good, but you get out to there. So, going by the oscilloscope, you know, settings that's pretty good in the middle, pretty good general overall. Like around this, it's only on the extremes we got some issues with. So, that's where we're gonna pick up tomorrow. Now we're going to do the high voltage test. Uh, black screen, brightness and contrast, turn all the way down. So we just do, uh, try to do this while watching it. About 19 and a half kilovolts. So that's dead on. And this is calibrated. Turning the uh, high voltage control on maximum, it gets to about. Uh, 21 to 22 kV, so it's working well within the range it should be. 
next thing I noticed that was odd on doing the dynamic convergence setup, like I'll turn the brightness back up. And we got a little, so you can, a little raster there, turn the contrast up. We got the dots. Um, is my waveform is inverted. Now I turned the amplitude down to where convergence looked really good. And again, this is just the electrical setup, not the visual setup, the final setup of the um, convergence. That is the vertical convergence output tube. And where I was measuring if the other waveform was on pin one, which connects to the vertical convergence transformer from the plate. And, okay, so there's a waveform at pin two on the grid, uh, W18. Okay, there's W18. And that right there is the correct waveform and, the, and it's not inverted. Uh, I'm gonna say it's a mistake in both the SAMs and the RCA manual because convergence is actually working correctly. Um, at first I was concerned about the uh, convergence transformer. Um, the problem being, uh, this one wasn't labeled like all the other ones by uh, John Folsom. And it had a red labeled one, a black labeled two, and I have it where one goes to the uh, fuse on the high voltage cage, two goes to pin one of the, uh, that convergence tube. I thought, you know, cause it was a little confusing. I was actually I had to ring out all the resistances of the windings to make sure I had it wired right. In addition to following the wiring diagram on one of the restoration sites. So I flipped it around and I got the waveform he had, but convergence was all wrong uh, on the vertical. So put the wiring back and convergence works perfectly. My waveform does match the SAMs and RCA service manuals. It's just, it's inverted. Um, but everything else is correct, including this waveform here going up to it. So I'm gonna lead that to a mistake, which is very likely. Now, this is the grid here. Um, as you can see, it's pretty close now. I mean, it's obviously fringing at the bottom and top, but it ain't too bad. And that's just doing it electrically. Uh, now, next steps you gotta do is visually adjust it. And that's where we're gonna end this particular video. I'll play a video clip to show you how well it performs now. Uh, the next part of this video is gonna be wrapping up everything. And a thank you to everybody who has contributed to this project and showing what they had contributed. Um, I don't have the safety glass on the front. So cosmetically almost done. Electrically just convergence and the tuner issue with the RF alignment, which I'll take care of, and it's done. We ordered some wire mesh that is very similar to what was on there originally, and we are going to make our own back panel and make a cup to go around the CRT neck. So it'll be pretty close to what was in there originally. There's gonna be a same wire mesh on the bottom. Uh, that's supposed to be uh, you know, protecting the chassis underneath. And I got, I'm gonna use the same stuff to build the cage for the high voltage. But other than what you're seeing here, this thing is almost done. It's just doing the final convergence tweaks. Like I said, as you can see here, it ain't too bad considering, you know, like I said, I just followed the electrical line, which basically gets the, all the convergence controls within the range they're supposed to be. So yeah, uh, so I'm gonna play a short clip here to wrap this video up. Man, oh man, what I would have given to be Rick's wingman to have flown with the greatest.
obviously this is not going to convey what it looks like in person. In fact, the, the color on this TV is overloading the camera, even though I set the exposure for it. The reds, again, are truly incredible. As you can see, the picture is really stable. Those lines are from Macrovision. Uh, I'm playing an official DVD here. But... And the other thing the Macrovision does on this set, it induces buzz in the audio, which happens on any vintage set, really, so just ignore that. I ran this TV for 15 hours now and it's never given a single hiccup. See, even though the convergence I still have to do the visual adjustment of it, doing it electrically as we did earlier, it's pretty damn close. And how does it compare? I mean, the other thing, like, the sharpness on this, as you can see, is very good. And then a little bit of noise from the tuner, which still needs adjusted. But look at that. I've got a couple of guys on my tail. Last I remember, my man and I were holding a shipment So yeah, next video will be the final parts where convergence is done, which is really it for adjustments. Oh, and then, and then the tuner, and then... Great All cosmetic pieces put gone. back on it. <laughs> you are pulling my ripcord, right? And just who are you? Where are my manners? Captain Rick Scott. I'm just really happy about this. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. And I'm Amelia Bearheart, <laughs> leader of the loonies. I tell you, I am Rick Sky. Oh, get out of here. Sky be at least 50. The thing, it's Besides, also unique to watch about this. The picture, too. Is still round, but the shadow mask is flat inside. If you go side here, you can kind of see that. It's kind of weird seeing it like that. For the first NTSC color TV, it does blow you away. This is the color and the contrast on this is fantastic. And, I mean, I mean, the reds are actually overloading the camera, and I have everything set normally right now. The picture is, like, not as bright as what we're used to today, but it is so saturated on color. No, you can't. Just look at that. What's this bloody rubbish about my squadron stealing the silver? So that's it for this video, and like I said, in a very short time, we'll be wrapping this project up. Thanks for watching, and hit like and subscribe.